Travel and Tourism Committee. Chairman Buscaino here, uh, joined by my colleague on the committee, Council Member Krikorian. Um, thank you for joining us today. It's Tuesday, March 20th. With that, um, if I can direct your attention to the agenda, what we'll do first is um, take multiple speaker cards and call up Herman. And general public comment. And uh, yes, and general public comment as well. So two in one. Two and one. Okay, two minutes on the multiple items and one on the general public. A general public comment. Yes, sir. So in regards to Los Angeles World Airports, regarding customer experience and guest satisfaction, well, I am not too satisfied on the concerns of my safety and that of my PSD. Because my little service dog, woof, woof, is very afraid to be stored up in some nasty airplane where he can't breathe and end up dying. So I believe the mayor needs to get himself involved with the American Disability Act and find out what is the legality and conditions to safeguard our service dogs from being injured or killed at the LAX airport. Because after all, service dogs, like human beings, have rights, and you don't want to encourage liability on that. And then I go into the other items. Item two, item... Our general public. Oh, I don't get two minutes now? I thought I had general public coming after my, my... Oh, keep going, sorry. Oh, damn, fuck. I know I'm disabled, but not that disabled. In regards to item three, again, this is dealing with the what? Export terminal off of what? The Board of Harbor. And that belongs to Joe Buschiano and his chairman in the back, Eric, who supports the harbor. See, we're having problems with these LLCs that the city pays to do the business of the people. And I'm here in opposition that we rehire the legal team to continue on the Port Harbor. And I deny them access as I appeal to the public's interest. And now, in intent to our censorship and to prevent us from exercising the right to free speech, the right of assembly, the right to due process under the American Disability Act, Section 203, called discrimination. You must stop the malice oppression with intent or intention to deprive public comment, suppressing us to harm emotionally and mentally. This is called legal constitutional rights and the liability falls on the budget man, Mr. Krikorian, because he's able to give us a blank check and tell us to Baba Booey, Howard Stern, get the fuck out of Los Angeles and pay Wayne Spiller and get Mr. Herman the fuck out of Los Angeles now. <laughs> okay. We now have also on item number six. What's the name? Oh, Miss uh, Cham uh, Susan Chamber. Yes. Susan here. Okay. So no other call, no other cards, right? No, sir. Okay. So with that. Um, thank you. If I can direct your attention uh, again to the agenda, Mr. Kokorian, I'm looking at taking items on consent two, four, five, six, and seven. Would you like to hold any of those on the desk? No, sure. Okay. So with that, we'll approve on consent items two, four, five, six, and seven. Mr. Herman, you are. Um, that's your 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 final warning. Okay. So do not disrupt this meeting. Otherwise, you'll be asked to leave. So with that, let's take item number one. Good afternoon.
afternoon, John White, City Clerk. Item one, Los Angeles World Airports to present verbal report relative to improved customer service, customer experience, and guest satisfaction at Los Angeles International Airport. How are you? Good, thank you. So you're the CEO of the airport, huh? Almost. Um, we call it CXO, X for experience. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> chief experience. Okay, this, got it. I saw it as a chief experience officer, but nothing Probably against Flint Deborah Flint, Flint right? Yes. There's a different CEO. <laughs> exactly. So we won't tell Well, thank that. you we for joining us. Um, so, Ms. Barbara Yamamoto, if you can um, proceed with your presentation. Sure, thank you for this opportunity. Um, we are coming up on our third year of our um, initiative, guest experience initiative, which we call the LA Exceptional Experience. Um, so I appreciate this opportunity to give you an update on where we are. Um, as you know, we're putting the guests at the center of all of our decision making, um, which means that we're listening to our guests and um, listening to what they have to say about the guest experience at LAX. So we have a number of uh, feedback mechanisms that we're looking at. Um, one is an industry-wide survey called the ASQ, uh, which stands for Airport Service Quality Survey. Um, and it's an industry benchmark to let us know how we're doing. It looks at, at a number of different attributes from access to curb to the gate. Um, and it's rated um, on a scale of one to five. Um, and we get the results on a quarterly basis. So we received our fourth quarter ASQ scores, which gives us a good look at the entire year of 2017. Um, the dashed line is 2016, the solid line is 2017. And so we are very pleased that we are on a continuous path of improvement um, with overall satisfaction improving about 2.1% uh, as compared to 2016. Um, so on the five point scale, we're at uh, a 3.78. Uh, moving up from a 3.70. Um, like us, most of the other participating airports in the survey are relatively flat or they're holding steady. Um, and with all the construction going on at LAX and with all the increases in guests and vehicles, uh, we're really pleased that we're holding the line. Another feedback mechanism that we're tracking is the J.D. Power uh, North American Airport Survey, um, which is on a 1,000-point scale. Um, and just last week, we received our scores for Wave 2, which covers late October through December 2017. Um, and we've improved 23 points um, from 2017 to the second wave of 2018. Uh, we went from 712 to 735. Um, this is about a 3.2% increase. Um, and it's one of the biggest improvements in scores that airports in our category experienced. Um, the Average for all the airports in the category is 756, um, and the highest ranking airports in our category were Orlando and Las Vegas, and they're at a 785. Um, again, this is on a 1,000 point scale. But if you look at our progress from 2015 to now, um, we have shown significant improvement of about 65 points, which is a 9.7% increase. And again, this is in spite of the increases in volumes of people and traffic, um, as well as all the construction going on. Um, in addition, if you look at just wave two of last year compared to wave two of this year, um, we also have shown significant increase of about 12 points. Um, of course, we'd like to see even more significant improvement. We know there's not one silver bullet that's going to cure everything and make everything better. Um, we know it's going to take a strategic and a programmatic approach um, that's multi-pronged. So all of these elements that you see here are uh, part of our strategic roadmap on how we're going to find some overall improvement to the guest experience. Um, so we're looking at ways to improve guest satisfaction and really optimize that end-to-end -end journey, um, whether that means um, improved facilities or services or technology or innovation, um, or those little things that bring surprise and delight into the journey, things that people don't expect. Um, as well as bringing in some of that L.A. into LAX, so you get more of that L.A. vibe and bring in things that are more uniquely L.A. Uh, of course, the people who work at the airport are a huge part of the guest experience, and that's why we've really invested um, in a holistic approach to employee engagement that includes what we call eye care training, um, and that's for everyone at the airport, not just LAWA, but everyone who works at the airport. Um, it also includes mystery shopping to uh, make sure that what's learned in the classroom is being applied on the job. And then this month, uh, which is Employee Appreciation Month um, nationally, 
um, we've launched a, a really cool rewards and recognition program. Um, we believe all of this is really important because, again, with all the increases in, in people and traffic, um, we know the airport can be a stressful place. And just being able to turn to someone with a caring attitude can really help take the edge off of that experience and maybe turn a bad experience into a positive and long-lasting impression. So I'm happy to take any questions. So thank you for that, Ms. Yamamoto. Let me ask you, um, in the um, rating that you received from our travelers, what would, would you say would be their, their biggest grievance of their experience at LAX? Yep, I would have to say that it's, it's all boils down to the traffic, um, which is really important because that sort of sets the tone for the rest of the journey. Mm -hmm. If they already arrive at the airport and they're already frustrated because they had a long journey just to get to the airport, that sort of sets their, the tone as well as the expectation for the rest of their experience. And is, what do we need to do to increase those, uh, to increase these numbers as far as getting a better experience at the airport? I know LAMP has a lot to do with that, but what right. else? So uh, the LAMP uh, will address the traffic issue. Mm -hmm. That's a long-term right, solution. Um, so, and we know that with the construction for the LAMP, um, there's going to be a lot of impacts to the guest experience. Um, but based on the data that we're getting from ASQ, there's um, one question that asks them, what's the most important thing to you at this airport in terms of your guest experience? And for um, eight quarters, the same five things have popped up. Um, and it's uh, wait times for security, as well as check-in. Mm -hmm. And then it's Wi-Fi, um, wayfinding, which is sort of the signage piece. And then um, always included are the restrooms. So those are the areas that we have prioritized to take a look at because we feel if we improve in those areas, mm -hmm. that will improve the overall satisfaction scores. Appreciate that insight. Yeah, I, it, thank you for this. And obviously, it's good news when you see the numbers continuing to go up uh, year after year. But I'm unclear on what the major components that make up these numbers are. Is it a, sort of an open-ended? satisfaction survey or are there specific questions with s specific allocations of points in particular categories? Right. So for the ASQ, it's actually about um, 30 areas that they're asked about. Um, and the question is, how would you rate service in this area? And it'll say um, ground transportation, parking, check-in wait times, um, courtesy of the staff. Mm. Um, so it goes through the entire journey. So if you wouldn't, could, could you uh, get to the committee members uh, that breakdown of the specific categories so that we yeah, can digest it a little bit more as to what the specific components are that where we're doing really well and maybe areas that we aren't doing quite as well? Sure, absolutely. Um, we get a breakdown quarter by quarter um, for each of those 30 different categories. We'd be happy to provide that to you. Great. Thank you. And then uh, with regard to traffic, since I agree with you, that seems to be you know people's principal complaint about everything in Los Angeles, and not least of which the airport. Uh, <clears throat> I, I'm a little concerned that as we've brought the uh, uh, Uber and Lyft into the airport, that um, the goal was to ease passenger use. But now that they're essentially cruising the airport, I'm concerned that that Maybe be increasing congestion in the airport rather than decreasing it. And um, I don't know if you have any, if you've seen any change in the public's reaction about congestion in the airport over the last couple of years specifically. Um, but with the decline of taxi availability and the increase in um, uh, the, you know, the alternatives, um, I, I, I think that that's anecdotally. I'm I'm seeing that that's actually you know not helping the problem. But I don't know if you have any if you've seen any evidence. Of right. That. So the surveys don't specifically ask about um, Uber or Lyft impacts, but there is a ground transportation category, um, and we've pretty much stayed the same. Um, in fact, there's been a slight increase from about 3.58 um, to 3.65. Um, but I think anecdotally, we're getting a lot of comments from our guests um, about the impacts um, of the TNCs to the overall traffic um, situation. 
I know our operations folks are taking a look at that closely to see what the impacts are and, and maybe what we can do to, to address that problem. Great. Because, I mean, I can see positives, but I can also see negatives, especially now that they're right. you know, and I know when they weren't supposed to be cruising. Right. And most recently, uh, we've enabled the um, Uber pool, which allows you to make multiple pickups right. along your, your trip. Um, so I don't know the real impacts of that yet. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Well, so you mentioned um, traffic. That's a long-term solution with the lamp. Obviously, it's built out of 20, 2024 or so. Um, so what are we doing um, short-term on addressing some of the uh, issues on passenger experiences based on the feedback you got? Um, specific to traffic? Yeah, or yeah. no, just specific to anything, non-traffic related issues. Um, so there's a, a lot of things. This is why it's important, I guess, to, to be able to see right, what right, right. Passengers are, right. how, how the passengers are reading us. Right. So, of course, you're already familiar with the huge investment that we're making in the facilities piece and the infrastructure piece, um, but we know that that alone won't improve the overall guest experience. So this whole um, people piece is intended to improve the overall guest satisfaction at the airport. Um, we're bringing, trying new um, innovative technologies to get people through the lines faster um, through biometrics and things like that. Um, we're looking at the, the surprise and delight piece. So we've uh, recently launched a new entertainment program um, so that people who have long dwell times, at least they have something to do while they're at the airport. And then of course the whole food and retail piece mm -hmm. um, is really important to the overall guest experience. Live entertainment? Yeah, live inter entertainment. We have uh, we've partnered um, with um, uh, LAX Presents, um, which is per, uh, part of the Grand Performances. All and, terminals or selected? Um, it's selected terminals, but I think we hit almost every one throughout the year. So for, we have the whole um, year program for entertainment. Karaoke bar, maybe. <laughs> Oh, Are you volunteering? I was actually going to suggest a stage for stage. the chair of the T3 committee. To <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Um, appreciate the, I know this is, uh, it's important for us uh, as we often hear um, feedback from local media outlets and passengers alike. So um, really appreciate the commitment that law has made to bring you on and, and look at um, uh, addressing the guest satisfaction issues at our um, at our airport so this is I believe a receiving file with no action right so thank you very much for the report thank you thank you <coughs> okay item number two item three three please. sorry item three board of harbor commissioners and co reports relative to resolution number 178200 for the proposed development of the former u.s customs house and los angeles export terminals facility and a pilot study to market test the validity of the Harbor Performance Enhancement Center proposed operational model and related environmental finding. Yeah, how are you? Good Justin, afternoon. how are you? Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. So uh, we appreciate the, the time for the, uh, the members today. We uh, this These uh, items are to allow for uh, uh, grant entitlement for... Just identify yourself for the... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Jack Hedge, I'm the Director of Cargo and Industrial Real Estate at Port of Los Angeles, and having me, Justin Houderman from the City Attorney's Office. Yes, good afternoon, Honorable Council Members, Deputy City Attorney, Justin Houderman. Thank, Thank you. you. So um, the purpose of this uh, revocable permit is to allow uh, Harbor Performance Enhancement Center uh, test uh, pilot study, uh, testing out various business models and, and operational scenarios uh, to try to validate which of the models is, is going to be most appropriate in the harbor environment. Um, the, the proposed project uh, is one that we believe will lead to uh, enhanced cargo velocity, cargo throughput uh, with our various terminals by eliminating a certain congestion for certain customers. Uh, but the, we, we want to, uh, during the CEQA process, we want to take this opportunity to test different operational models and see which one is, is going to be most effective and, and most accepted by the marketplace. And so that's the purpose of these entitlements. And if you can just, Jack, walk us through the, the pilot program. Right, so the, the, uh, the proposal that we received from HPEC and that we're moving forward on is to set up what is in effect a, 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 free, a free flow cargo facility. So cargo will be moved from individual terminals to this centralized location, um, which will increase the, the velocity of cargo moving out of the terminal gates on a daily basis. That, that centralized facility will operate 24 seven. 
and then the cargo owners will be able to, to come there at any time during off-peak hours and pick up their cargo and move it out to their warehouses for their for their use and distribution. So it should alleviate some of the traffic congestion mm -hmm, issues that mm -hmm, we have in and around mm -hmm. the, the harbor uh, and take advantage of off-peak traffic times. Uh, right, so with these efficiencies that um, under the leadership of, of Gene Soroka and, and the team there, even this morning we, we had the um, port conference environmental event this morning that we really celebrate the fact that we're lowering emissions and these efficiencies help with uh, reducing of uh, truck idling at the port, correct? They, they help, they, we, we believe they'll help dramatically. Uh, and, and what is happening, and, and this is part of what you saw in, in, the, in the event this morning, mm -hmm. the cargo volume continues to rise. The number of ship calls is, is actually dropping because the ships mm -hmm. are getting bigger. So that means more cargo comes in at any one time, and it creates these congestion backlogs. Mm -hmm. And those congestion backlogs at the gate lead to longer wait times for the trucks. And so trucks come in, in bigger clumps, they idle longer, it actually creates more pollution. This will help alleviate that, right. that, that so factor. Fewer that touches problem. per can helps reduce emissions rates. Yes. And remind me, this is at the old LAXT site? Correct. And that site's been vacant now for over 10 years. So this is a, we think this is a very good strategic use of port assets uh, to help alleviate uh, these environmental issues as well as you know, keeping the port competitive uh, mm -hmm. from, a, from a throughput standpoint well into the future. And if I recall, um, I know there were some labor issues uh, evolved around this, this piece here. Now we have longshoremen and women who are going to be moving the cans from point A to point B. In, in some cases we there are. In some cases, longshoremen uh, within certain terminals, depending on the different terminal contracts that they have, different, the different terminals ha hire their own labor. And some of the terminals have them doing sort of inter-terminal uh, inter dray, uh, drayage moves. And uh, uh, there, we, we expect some of that could continue with this, with this facility. But the cargo owner really controls who picks up their boxes and who moves them. Right. So that's part of the, the purpose for the pilot study, is yeah. to test those different operational aspects and see you know, what works and what doesn't. Understood. Deputy City Attorney Hotterman, do you have anything to add? Well, I think that's absolutely right. Um, the, the key point is we have allowed for a pilot study to determine these levels of efficiencies. Those pilot studies, the information that is generated will then find its way into the environmental impact report, which will then find its way to the Harbor Commission to see whether or not the proof is in the pudding, whether or mm -hmm. not we have reduced the idle times, we've reduced the number of touches should come out in the pilot study. And a timeline on this? It's a 12-month program. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Corian, do you have anything? No. I don't. Let's get the information. Yeah, looking forward Test to that. that. Thank you very much. So with that, uh, we'll approve item three and um, move that to council. Okay, I believe that was the last item. Thank you, Thank Thank you very much. much. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, we are now adjourned. Thank you.